Hi everybody, this is Beth McCullough and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States and I blog at StampingMom.com. I'm here every Wednesday at noon central time with my sweet husband Steve. Hi everybody! And we have some things to make today. We're making fun May Day baskets. With chocolate. And we're, you don't need to yell, they can hear you. <laughs> I'm excited about chocolate. You're excited. Is one of the baskets for you? Uh, maybe. Okay, so last week we made this fun Hey Birthday Chick card. Hey Birthday Chick is going in the new catalog with magnets. Isn't that cute? And so we're going to do the drawing. I had six people who shared the video. It's Jean Hoffman, Tony Shaw, Barb Kingsley, Mary Ellen Ryan, Karen Finkel, and Bev Stokes. So I'm going to cut your names apart. And Steve is going to do the drawing for the card. Wait, that might make me bad cop to somebody. I don't yep, want to be bad cop. You get cop. to be bad cop. Hi, Mary. I'm glad you're here. Bridget's here, too. Okay. So you saw that I had everyone's name in here that shared my video from last week. Oops, I have funny, a dimensional paper on my hands. Okay, so here is all, again, if you missed it, it's Jean Hoffman, Karen Finkel, Tony Shaw, Mary Ellen Ryan, Barb Kingsley, and Bev Stokes. Okay, so you can't see any of these, right? Or should I put them in something? I should have put them in a Mayday basket. I should have put them in a Mayday basket. Here, you can put them. Here's my lost stamps. Okay, are you ready? Am I pulling Come a name or a lost stamp? <laughs> Try to pull a name. Okay. I, He's I, not I, looking. He's looking away. I'm not looking. I'm messing him up. up. Oh, I got one. Okay, who won? <laughs> Karen Finkel from Florida, you won the Hey Birthday Chick card from last week. Congratulations. I will get that to you. I think I even still have your address. Okay, so here's what we're making today. And the reason we're making this is because it was Easter on Sunday, right? So if you go to your stores now, all the Easter candy's half price. So guess where I get my May Day candy? You're frugal. Mm, well, wow, the smell of these are overwhelming. Um, they're pretty colors for spring. These are just Reese's peanut butter cups that are wrapped. So they're the perfect half price. Are you eating the candy? No. Yes, you are. Maybe. But, okay, so the candy up here on the shelf, that's last year's candy. You're that's eating good. You're eating old candy. <laughs> So, um, all you need is some Easter grass and some designer series paper. This basket is nine inches, a nine inch square of designer series paper, and then a one inch strip for the handle. This is six inch designer series paper with a one inch for the handle. I really like this flower. Do it's you? It's very colorful. So, should we make another... Um, Let's make another one of these, okay? Oh, and this one, look at this pretty paper. I love this paper. And this ribbon is retiring. It is the polka dot tool ribbon. And I don't have a May Day stamp, but I found May the New Life of Spring Bring You Joy. It has the word May in it. Yeah. And you know what you could do? I hadn't thought of this. You could just stamp the May and find a day someplace else. That might be a lot of work, though. I just stamped that, and then I used the stitch so sweetly. This is carrying over. And I poked a hole in it. I poked this hole with my detailed trio punch, and it was pretty easy. So I'm saying you can do a 12-inch piece of paper, a 9-inch, or a 6-inch. But I'll show you today how to do the six inch. So take whatever DSP you want and make sure it's how, you know, a design, because both sides will show. 
So with the six inch, you want it in even increments. So we're gonna score at two inches from every single side. Did you do May Baskets as a kid, Steve? Um, no, but I remember that the people in our neighborhood do them, so our kids did May Baskets. Yeah, we always did May Baskets here in West Des Moines. Anyone watching, do you do May Baskets where you live? I think it's super fun. Some people put a potted plant, um, and we could do that this year. Hey, we haven't told everyone about our seeds. We're starting seeds, so we could put a tomato plant in a May basket. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, if they're ready. So maybe we have to wait till they actually sprout first because the cherry before, is out. <laughs> before we clean, we have some of them are sprouting. Okay, six inch piece of designer series paper scored two inches from every side. And then I'm going to pick this side and cut all the way up to the score line. So see, we have it like this. And I'm going to flip it around and do the exact opposite. Steve went to go check on our seedlings. I don't see any sprouts, but I didn't look too closely. Oh, I saw sprouts when I looked this morning. A couple of them. Do you do that every morning? <laughs> well, of course I do. I have to water them. Do you think they'll sprout without water? Probably not. Probably not. So I'm going to be like Henny Penny again. I planted the seeds and I... <laughs> I, I made, made the bread and you can't have any. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so burnish your score lines on all the sides. And we cut up here and here, just on one side, okay? So this is what it looks like, whether you do the 9-inch square or the 6-inch square. Now, there's two options for this. You can bring the sides up, and you can make a totally squared off little basket, or you can bring them up and have the basket like this. Which way do you like it better? Or should I make a squared one so we have options? I like this one because I think it looks fancy, but I don't okay. have a point of reference with the square. So. Okay. Well, let me tell you how I did that one. If you're going to do the square, you're going to bring in these flaps, put an adhesive on the back, of this, glue it right to that, put adhesive here, and glue it right to there, and you're gonna square it off, and do the same thing on the other side. So you're gonna end up with a basket like this, which is fun too. If you wanna do it the way I did it, then what you're gonna do is I matched these two sides so they came to a point. And then I decided which designer series paper I liked in front. And I like the darker green in front. So then I'm gonna take a little liquid glue and put it on the back of the flap like that. And I'm gonna line it up so the point is together right here. Then inside, I didn't put any glue there on that flap. So I'm going to put some glue on this inside flap, bring it back up, and just hold it together for a second to give that glue a chance to dry. While the glue's drying, let's say hi to Bev and Barb and Linda. Hi, everybody. I am so glad you're here. Steve is having a stressful day at work reading bond documents, so he needed a break to see everybody. This is a little bit more exciting, I have to admit. Not not that it's spine tingling or anything, but it's still <laughs> better than reading bond documents. Okay, so I did the same one, same thing on this one. Picked which side of the designer series paper I wanted to show. And then I popped open this flap inside and added a little glue. There. How easy is that? You can make these little baskets for Easter next year. You can make them for May Day. Okay, I want everyone to guess the real reason that I like the one that splits out to the sides rather than square. If you see inside, you'll understand. It, it holds more chocolate. And, you know, more chocolate is, is, that, is better. Is that the reason? That's okay, so you really like the 9-inch one better then, right? 
Okay, so now what I did is I took a one inch by six inch strip, just cut it off. You can put it on the outside of the basket or you can put it on the inside. I like to put it on the outside and if any of you have your Stampin' Up! stapler from back in the day, if you staple it, it's certainly not gonna come apart. If you don't have a stapler, if you have one of these big staplers, this also works. So I'm just bringing the flap of the handle down to the other side and stapling it. Now on this one, I put the flower over the staple. I really don't mind the staples on there. On the big one, here's the staple. I put the tag in front and then I wrap the ribbon around the tag. So for this one, we need some grass. I know they had grass at Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna throw some grass in there. And Steve wants candy. You could do candy kisses. You could do these Reese's peanut butter cups. I just don't think any of the kids are gonna go, oh, Beth is cheap, she used half price Easter candy, well, right? Well, okay, it, as long as you don't use the eggs, like the Easter yeah. eggs, I think you're fine because I don't think there's any difference between Mayday candy and Easter candy as long as it's not eggs or bunnies. Right, and it's this year's. I do have candy from 2017. Which is still good, I know, because <laughs> I was just eating it by mistake. <laughs> okay, so, how to decorate it. You wanna put ribbon around the handle with a tag. Um, you could put a flower right on the top. What do you think, Steve? Well, I like this one with the flower because I like the flower so much. What would you think of the flower on the top? Um, that's okay as long as it doesn't impede somebody from actually using the handle to lift it up. Oh, so you would rather have it here. What else do you guys think we could use to decorate these besides a tag and a ribbon and a flower? Is anyone? No, no thoughts yet, except I have to tell you, Bridget has a, a wonderful application of your basket. She used three inch baskets to hold bird seed at her daughter's wedding. Oh, that is awesome. So three inch baskets, did you start with the six inch? She did three inch squares, she said. Three inch squares. So well, probably three by three by three. Three by three, well, should we make one of those? Let's see how big that ended up being. So anyway, you can, you can decorate this however you want. Let's quick make, so Bridget, you started with a three inch square. That's what she said. Mary also suggested butterflies as a decoration because it is spring after all. Oh, butterflies would be perfect, wouldn't it? I actually have some butterflies here. Well, we have butterflies here too on, on your previous card. Yeah, and look at this one. Okay, so let's do a three inch square just to see how big. And if you did a three inch square, you would score it at one inch because you want it in thirds. So get the cutting blade out of the way and do one inch all the way around. So did you have a happy Easter, everyone? We had a wonderful church service. In fact, our church service is online if you're interested. It's Hope WDM. WDM for West Des Moines. And .org. you can go on there and see the Easter service, and it was fabulous. Everything is online at our church, and there were people in person also. But it was fun. You know, I wish I still had it to show. Okay, so three inches by three inches scored at one inch from every direction and then you cut up to the score line oh you were sweet bridget i can see how little this is you didn't dump buckets of bird seed on your daughter you gave them a a, a titch of bird seed so that okay so we've done the same thing we cut up to the score line on the two sides and then Bridget, I bet you kept it as squares. So we're gonna do that. 
We're going to put glue on the back of the center one. Did you know what tomorrow is, Steve? Uh, April 8th? Yep, tomorrow I get to do the online on stage and yes. see things from the new catalog. Super excited. And my new order from the catalog comes on Friday. Bridget you said she did the basket shape. Oh, you did the basket shape? Oh, I'm too late because I've glued it together. So when Bridget says the basket shape, I think she means this shape. But here's how you do it if you want to do just a little square basket. So we're going to fold this together. Do you want to cut a handle for this, hon? Uh, sure. Um, the paper might be under there. Yeah, it's on the other side. And I don't think we want a one-inch handle, so maybe make a half an inch handle. This is a cute little basket. Isn't that sweet? I like how tiny it is. This is too long. It's too long. Well, you can make it shorter, too. And my butterfly is too big. I'll put one of these butterflies on. So we're going to go ahead and staple it to the side. You can glue it. You just have to be really patient and let it dry well. I'm going to bring that up to the top. So it's a little uh, funkier to work with it. When it's a little, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a glue dot on it so I'm not holding it in place at the same time that I'm trying to get the handle to stick. Oh, and look at this. A glue dot stuck to my finger for the other side. How convenient is that? It's meant to be. <laughs> so then I'm just going to take this and stick it to the glue dots on both sides. Now the glue dots would not be strong enough to keep the handle on there if you're gonna use it by the handle. What did Bridget say? They were small. Yeah, I think it's good. I wouldn't want a bunch of bird seed. And look at this, this butterfly. Remember the butterfly buys you paper that didn't last very long? That's what this butterfly was cut out of. And I think it's gonna land right on the handle. And then we're gonna fold the wings up. Look at that. That is quite the dainty little basket. And now does the staple bother, bother you there? No, you know, I think you just have to do it because, well, there you go. You can cover it up with your butterfly. Yeah, we could put we could put the butterfly down there. That's kind of fun, too. I am all but, about covering up mistakes or things that don't look as good as I wanted them yeah, to. Yeah, I think that's cute. So let your imagination go wild. You can put some cute flowers on the front, like this basket. This started with a 6 by 6 piece of paper, scored it 2 inches. This was a three inch piece of paper, scored at one inch on every side. And here is a nine inch um, piece of designer series paper, scored at three inches on every side. Super fun, but I'm sure you would have a use for every size and you could just figure out, figure out what you need and make it. And if you have kids or grandkids, how fun and easy. To make this with them. Well, and here's another idea that Bridget just had, which is that if you're having a dinner and you want to put guest favors out for people, this would be a good. This way would to be do perfect. It. I have a luncheon for my Bible study fellowship group May 11th. Wouldn't that be cute to have a little basket by everybody's plate? I also want to make them a prayer journal or something, so I need to work on that, and I'll show them to you probably after May 11th. But I think that's, that's all we have for you today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please leave a comment and share the video. And again, the winner of last week's card 
for sharing the video was Karen Finkel from Florida. So congratulations, Karen. And remember, you've got to tune in next week to get the exciting details on how many of the plants have sprouted. <laughs> do you think do you think they're excited about that as we are? I know that you are, honey. And yeah. so it'd be fun to have you describe it to them. So we always just buy plants and plant them. And this year we decided we'd start from seeds. So we are novices. If you have any advice on seeds starting in the house, please let me know. And everybody, have a wonderful day. And even if you watch the replay, hit replay. And I'd love it if you'd share the video and like it or leave us a heart. Thanks so much. Have a blessed day. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.